What's going on, everybody? Abersile here. Today, we're going to be talking about the client server model, the server client model, whatever you want to call it. I call it the client server model. I think it just sounds cooler that way, but uh, you can call it whatever you want. Um, so, today, we're going to talk about how, firstly, what a server is, you know, what a client is, how the game logic works, right? Like how your game runs, how stuff happens, and how people connect, all that stuff. Because there's some important things to realize about how your game operates. And um, this leads us into something called a local script. So local scripts are a vital part of scripting on Roblox because there are two sides to scripting. There is scripting for our client and there is scripting for the server. And so in order to understand when to use, what to use, where to use, like for instance, we shouldn't be using a local script in the server script service. That's not what Roblox made it for. So we're gonna talk about where stuff goes. We're gonna talk about what a server is, what a client is. You know, what is controlled by the server, what is controlled by the client, stuff like that. So, firstly, let's talk about what a server is. A server is essentially a way for people to retrieve information off the internet. Essentially, it's like, um, like when you download a file off of some website, you're connecting to the server associated with that website. So... In the same respect, when it comes to servers on Roblox, we're talking about the instances of your game that is being copied and that people can join, right? So if you go down to the servers list on your favorite game, you can see there's a bunch of different servers of the same game. It's essentially a way for people to access a specific instance of your game, essentially, in the in the in the context of Roblox specifically. So here's what Roblox does, right? They got these servers um, at some headquarters or whatever. They have servers all around. I don't know where exactly they have servers, but they have them kind of scattered around, uh, specifically the US. I'm assuming they have servers in, in Europe, all that stuff. But basically the point is that they have servers located all around you. And these servers are essentially how we can all connect over the internet and join the same game. So basically what happens is you click play on a, on a game, right? Roblox receives that information. They say, okay, we're going to go ahead and download that game. We're going to download an instance of that game, and we're going to create a server to essentially upload it um, to the internet. And we're going to allow you to join it. And this is the case when you are the first person in a game. So basically, you're reserving a new server, essentially. Uh, but if you're joining a already running server, then you're just going to download the game. And then you're going to join that server, essentially. That's essentially what happened. So yeah, that is, that's basically what happened. Roblox takes a game, downloads as many copies as they need so that X amount of players can join, whatever the max amount of players for per server per game is, and uploads it to the internet so that people can kind of download it and join each other. And these players are called clients. Clients are basically the computers that are receiving the information that is uploaded by the server. So like when you're when somebody moves in a game, that's uploaded to the server, and then the server replicates that to all the clients. And that may not make sense right now, because I haven't explained what replication is. Um, that goes into more so like how Roblox has programmed games to function for the most versatility in how games run. And we're actually going to explore that. So you know what a server is. Uh, you know somewhat what a client is. A client is just a computer that receives information from the server. And it also works the other way around. Clients can send information to the server. So that's also important to know. And we'll explore that uh, probably later. But for now, that's all you need to know. OK, 
Okay, so if there's anything you can take away from what everything I've said, a server is just a way for computers to be able to all access the same information over a host, aka a server. And we access this through the internet. Let's talk about how servers relate to clients on Roblox. So Roblox Studio is an application that basically simulates how a server client connection would work. So it's not really a server client connection. It's just running on your computer and they've programmed it to essentially feel like a client server connection, but it's not. It's entirely just on your device, um, pre-programmed. So don't be confused. Um, this is not connected to actual Roblox in any way. But when we click play, it's going to simulate what it's like to be a client. And we know this because of this tab here. So you can see this green thing is a server and the blue thing is a client. And there might be a lot more of these blue things and they're all connected to the server in some way. So if we click this, we can see, okay, this current client, right? That's what we're on right now. We're on the client where I can move around. This is what it's like to be a client. But if we click on this, we can see we get this kind of camera here. Sorry, we do get a camera. It's not just kind of a camera, it is a camera. So we are actually on the server now. It's important to distinguish certain functions related to each thing. So there are certain things that you can only do on the server and there are certain things that you can only do on the client. Actually, that's not a, way, a good way to put it. Basically, there's certain things that only the client, the server can change, and there's certain things that the client can also change. I, I'll give you an example. Basically, when you move, it's going to update on the server, and therefore, it's also going to update for every other client in the game. So when you move, everyone's going to see you move. So basically, you can see that, look at my explorer here. You see network client? network server and so you begin to think why are these not the same it's because every um every one every client and, and the server is going to have their own explorer okay and this will become clear in a minute but let me just say this your client is going to have its own workspace it's going to have its own every service it's going to have its own of all of these things but there are certain services the client cannot access. Uh, one of those is server script service, which is why I tell you to put server scripts here so that people can't access them. They're not supposed to be accessed. They're only supposed to be accessed by the server. Now, I don't have any scripts in here, so you can't see the little arrow. But um, if I did put a script, you would see the arrow here, but you wouldn't see it on the server, uh, on, the, on the client. But basically, we go to the server and the server has its own explorer. So for instance, if I inserted a part into the server's workspace, it's going to appear on every client's workspace. It's going to replicate to every client's workspace. What is replication? It basically means if something happens on the server, it's going to update the explorer for every other client so we can see that if we go to the if we go to the client you can see the part right because it replicated which means something happened on the server let's go ahead and fetch that information that data from the server and put it onto the client's explorer and in this case we put it into the client's workspace because it's a part that's where it belongs However, let's say we insert a part into, let's just go ahead and remove this uh, part on the server. It's going to remove it for the client as well. Let's say I insert a part into the client's workspace. So you can see it. I'm going to give you a second to just guess if, is this going to appear on the server? Well, if you answered no, you're correct. It's not going to appear on the server. Why doesn't it appear on the server? It's because there are certain rules in place 
that prevent the client from being able to control what happens on the server, right? Because exploiters, for instance, if they just went ahead and they were like, okay, I'm gonna insert a bunch of parts, or I'm gonna delete everything, well, then there's nothing we can do. So basically there are rules in place that prevent the client from being able to do certain things without given permission, which you can give them permission, but you have to code it yourself. Um, for instance, if, a, if, if you allow players to insert parts, for instance, like if it's a game where you build stuff, um, you need to be able to give them permission to do that. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to just insert parts on the server. Why not? Because if something happens on the server, it happens to everyone. And that means that the client has way too much power. This isn't the case. And so that's good. That's just, it's good to know that, right? But there are exceptions, right? So for instance, the client is in control of movement of their character. So if I move over here, it's going to always replicate to the server and therefore it's always gonna to replicate to every other client. So movement is one thing. So if I jump here, right, if I jump, everyone's gonna see it. But for instance, if, if I delete this part, it's not gonna delete it on the server. Um, sorry, it was never on the server. That's <laughs> basically, here's what I mean. So you put a part on the server, delete it on the client. Sorry, that is not what I meant to do. It's still gonna be on the server, right? Um, excuse me for being a little bit, a little bit foolish here. Um, so yeah, that, that is, you know, something specific and I'll, I'll give you another example as well. Like a lot of this just comes down to examples. Um, so you have like script, right? You put script in server script service. This is something only the server should ever be accessing. So for instance, if I run a client, it downloads its own copy of an explorer and we can see a uh, server script service. Where's the script? Well, there's no point in a client being able to access this information. This, you know, the client doesn't need this information. The server does. And so if we go to the server, we can see the script is there. So there are certain things that the client cannot access certain services, I should say. And there are also certain um, events in the game that also are, um, sorry, there are certain events that do replicate to the server for clients, for instance, jumping, running, etc. right? You know, this is just something that you have to learn from experience, like what things work, what things don't. All I need you to understand is that Certain things you cannot um, just change on the client and it's going to change it on the server, right? So for instance, if I insert a part, it's not going to replicate this to the server and therefore every other client, right? Because whatever happens on the server happens for the clients. This is not allowed. So it's important to understand the rules involved with the client versus the server, right? That is essentially the model, right? Because it's called the server client model, the client server model, call it whatever you want. Um, it's basically it just the relationship that the server and the client have and the rules that have been put in place with this connection. And I briefly went over just a couple rules involved. Yeah, I mean, that's about it. It's pretty, a little bit of a shorter episode. I don't know how long it is um how this this how long this one was but it's a little bit of a shorter one i hope i explained that as clearly as i could uh try my best hopefully that made sense uh next episode we're gonna talk about local scripts i think i think so i think we're gonna talk about local scripts because we have introduced what a client is and that not all scripts are server scripts so we're going to talk about the differences between server scripts and client scripts, which is just gonna further help you understand the client server model, hopefully. But for now, I just wanna introduce the concept that you know this is how the connection works, how multiple players can play at the same time. They are all connected to what's called the server. 
and certain things can happen on the server that every client can see, but there are certain things that happen for the client that not necessarily and everyone else can see. So for instance, if I was playing and I inserted a part on my client, nobody else is going to see that part. That part is only going to exist in my Explorer, my workspace. So hopefully that makes sense. Appreciate you guys sticking through on this one. And uh, yeah, next episode, going to be local scripts. Pretty excited to get into that. But until then, I will see you guys later. Peace.